السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته سورة الأعراف and today is the last day on سورة الأعراف we started سورة الأعراف four years ago on March 10th 2011 we started ayah number one on March 10th 2011 and today January 29th 2015 we conclude the ayah number 205 see how life goes by very fast this is a lesson for us only the tafsir of one ayah takes four years so inshallah next thursday we begin with surat yusuf alayhi salam because after araf there is anfal which already we did and after araf surat tawbah which is not politically conducive for our time. So we put it on the shelf. And then after that, inshallah, we begin Surat Yunus alayhi salam next Thursday. Sallu ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. Yunus alayhi salam. Yeah, after, uh, after Tawbah, we have Yusuf, and after that, we have Yunus. So we will begin Yunus. We did Yusuf during the month of Ramadan. Two Ramadans, we did Surat Yusuf. And we did Surat Maryam, and we did Surat Al-Asra, Al-Kahf, Al-Baqarah, Al-Ma'idah, Al-Imran. So almost two-thirds of the Quran we did. We have one more. Every 10 years, we do one-third of the Quran. So in these 20 years, 19 years, we did two-thirds. We need another 10 years, inshallah, if God permits, to conclude the entire Quran. Sallu ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. وَإِذَا قُرِئَ الْقُرْآنُ فَاسْتَمِعُوا لَهُ وَأَنْصِتُوا لَعَلَّكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ وَاذْكُرْ رَبَّكَ فِي نَفْسِكَ تَضَرُّعًا وَخِيفَةً وَدُونَ الْجَهْرِ تضرعا وخيفة ودون الجهر من القول بالغدو والآصال ولا تكن من الغافلين إن الذين عند ربك لا يستكبرون عن عبادته ويسبحونه ويسبحونه وله يسجدون صدق الله العلي العظيم وصدق رسوله الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد so tonight we go through ayah 204 and 205 and we conclude Surah Al-A'raf. But before that, ayah 204, we go through 204, 205 and 206. وَإِذَا قُرِئَ الْقُرْآنِ Once the Qur'an is being rehearsed and recited, فَاسْتَمِعُوا لَهُ وَأَنْصِتُوا We said in the previous week that the exegist Mufassirin of the Qur'an he said the occasion of the descent for this verse why God asked the Muslims to pay attention to the Qur'an two reasons one reason is that one reason for it is that when the Prophet used to read the Qur'an some some of those who were not praying behind him, they would speak. And they would overshadow the voice of the Prophet. This is one reason. The second reason, not those who were not praying. Those who were praying, they would speak in the middle of their prayers. They don't pay attention. 
they stand behind the Prophet. And this is the story has been narrated by Muslim scholars, Sunni scholars. They say some of the companions of the Prophet, some of them, especially the newly convert, they would stand behind the Prophet and while he's in the middle of his prayers, they talk with each other. How are you doing? What's up? You know, how is the market today? What did your wife cook for lunch today? Yeah. So the Quran said to them, فَاسْتَمِعُوا لَهُ وَأَنصِتُوا Not only listening. Istima is to listen. But we have something more than listening, which is insat. Insat means reflection. Think and meditate about the meaning of the Quran. Reflect about them. Try to understand the meaning, not just the sentence. It's a pity that we listen to a voice or a passage or anything and we don't understand the meaning of it. It's really a waste of time. Allah says, if you want to enjoy the Quran, you have to reflect on the meaning. I know some people, they enjoy the voice, the tajweed of Abdul Basit, Tablawi, Manshawi, those great reciters, Samir Amiri, one of them, definitely, I enjoy his voice, truly and honestly, I enjoy his voice, because Samir has a faith, and when you have faith, your, your heart is overwhelmed with the love of God, it reflects on your recitation. So, but this is not enough. Not enough to enjoy the music of the Quran. It is important to enjoy the meanings and to interact with the meanings. These are the statements made by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have to understand them. We have to pay attention to them. Today, if someone important speaks, he mesmerizes the audience. They pay attention to him. Allah is speaking here. فَإِذَا قُرِئَ الْقُرْآنِ It means when God is talking to you. فَاسْتَمِعُوا لَهُ وَأَنصِتُوا Stami' Listen, but there is something more than listening. We want you to reflect on what the Quran is telling you. We want you to interact with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is ayah 204. Then we come to ayah 205. وَاذْكُرْ رَبَّكَ فِي نَفْسِكَ My friends, the Quran sometimes addresses the Prophet, the prophet privately exclusively. He says this sentence, this command is only for you. But sometimes he addresses the Prophet, but this is not only for the Prophet, for the entire Ummah, the nation to listen. This verse is one of them. This verse here, although Allah is addressing the Prophet, but that this command is not exclusive to him. It is inclusive to the Ummah also. So we Listen to God through the Prophet. God is talking to him, but he wants us also, we, to hear what God is saying. What does he say to him? He says to him, وَاذْكُرْ رَبَّكَ فِي نَفْسِكَ تَضَرُّعًا وَخِيفَةً وَدُونَ الْجَهْرِ مِنَ الْقَوْلِ There are four things here. Allah says to the Prophet, if you want to remember me, ذِكْرُ الله, the remembrance of Allah. Remembrance of Allah that gives fuel to us. How do you fuel your stomach with lunch and dinner? How do you fuel your heart? How do you recharge your heart with the remembrance? Dhikrullah. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu thkurullah dhikran kathira wa sabbihuhu bukratan. Bukratan is morning. Asila is sunset. Day and night. We will come to this specific meaning later on. So this is how we fuel our heart. This is how we, we encourage, we infuse the heart, the heart with, with energy, with enthusiasm, with hope, so we don't collapse. You depend on your heart. If you feel weakness in your heart, you don't want to see anyone. 
You become very pessimistic of this life. The life becomes so dark in your eyes. Why? Because the heart is weak. The heart does not have an energy. But if the heart is strong, you don't feel tired. You don't feel tired. You can run for miles and miles and miles. Run metaphorically, I mean. Run means work in this life, produce. Because the, your heart is strong. Your heart is strong. Awliyaullah, sometimes the true servants, the true friends of God, they don't eat food, but they are strong. One of them is Ali ibn Abi Talib, alayhi salatu wasalam. Ali ibn Abi Talib, the day when he conquered Khaybar, Khaybar, I've seen Khaybar and some of you were with us, I, I, I remember, about 10 years ago. Khaybar is off limit. The Saudis, they don't allow the Muslims to go to see Khaybar. It's off limit. They don't want you to see what happened. They don't want you to, to know what happened in the history of Islam. Because the hero of Khaybar is the man called Ali ibn Abi Talib. Khaybar today exists. The castle of Khaybar, which was built thousands of years ago, still exists. It does exist. If you go 160 kilometer, kilometers north of Medina, towards Tabuk, on the way to Jordan and Syria, and off, off the road, a couple of miles off the road, is the land of Khaybar. And the castle of Khaybar is there. And you can see the gate, very visible. The gate that was conquered by Ali ibn Abi Talib, alayhi salatu wasalam, Amir al mumin And I tell you something, nothing terrifies the Jews today in Israel more than the name of Khaybar and Ali ibn Abi Talib, believe me. Nothing terrifies them. <coughs> because they remember what happened. On that day, the Prophet first sent the first Caliph. He said to him, you go. He went in the morning, he came back in the afternoon, he did nothing. Read the history of Islam, the history that is written not by Shi'as, huh? I don't want to read the history written by Shias. I read history written by others. They say when he came back, يُجَبِّنُ أَصْحَابَهُ وَيُجَبِّنُونَهُ The first caliph, he turns to his friends who came with him. He says to them, he says to them, you are cowards. They tell him, you are cowards. This is in Arabic. يُجَبِّن from جُبْن. And جُبْن is cowardness. So he accuses them of being coward. They tell him, we are not coward. You are coward, your majesty. Then the following day, the prophet sends the second caliph. The same story. He goes there and he comes back. The same story. He says thank you to them and they say thank you to him for not being able to do anything. Then the prophet said, now you may ask why God is sending those first people. God has a point. God wants to show you the comparison. The Prophet did not send Imam Ali the first day. He sent him the third day. Then when they could not do anything, historians tell us that the Prophet said, لَأُعْطِيَنَّ الرَّايَةَ غَدًا رَجُلًا يُحِبُّ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ ويحبه الله ورسوله كرارا غير فرار لا يرجع حتى يفتح الله على يده. Tomorrow I am going to give this banner, banner of Islam, to a man. I'm not going to say his name tonight. I'm going to say his name tomorrow. But I want you to know this banner is going to be given to a man يحب الله ورسوله. Yuhib here, it means he's enchanted with God and his apostle. And when you are enchanted with someone, you give him your life, your blood. You are enchanted with him. You love him the most. And then not only he loves God and his apostle, God and his apostle love him too. It's a mutual. The love is reciprocal between him and God and the prophet. This is how the Prophet describes Imam Ali. 
He says, this man is all, only moves, he, he, he knows how to move only forward. He does not know how to go backward. He does not know in his vocabulary, there is nothing called retreat. He only moves forward. He does not have the reverse gear. He doesn't have. His reverse gear is broken. I remember we had a car in Karbala 50 years ago. The reverse gear was broken, so we have to push it back. Karraran غير farrar. He does not retreat. لا يرجع. He would not come back to the camp حتى يفتح الله عليه until God would enable him victory. The Sahaba, they could not sleep that night. They could not sleep in anticipation. Who is this man? Of course, the, the good ones among them, they know. They know. Does not need explanation. But some of them could not sleep until morning Fajr. When the Prophet did Salatul Fajr, he said, where is Ali? Again, there is a point. Allah does not want Ali to be there at that minute. Where is Ali? They said, you don't know about Ali? Ali is sick. Ali has pain in his eyes. He, has, he cannot see. He cannot even open his eyes. He says, Ituni bih. Bring him to me. They brought him leaning on two, on Abbas, his uncle, another one. They carried him until he came. He could not move. He could not open his eyes. The Prophet took some of his saliva. فَمَسَحَ عَلَىٰ وَجْهِهِ فَطَابَتْ بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ He puts his saliva on Ali's eyes. He opened his eyes as if nothing happened to him. Very healthy and powerful. And he says, Ya Ali, now take this banner and go ala barakatillah. Go with God's blessings. And Ali takes off to this castle. And the Jews, they put all their strength in defending this castle. This is their integrity. This is their strength. And Ali goes, and he does not come back. The Prophet in the camp, sitting in his tent, all of a sudden the Prophet hears the voice, Allahu Akbar, the voice of Ali ibn Abi Talib, reverberates in that area. The Prophet knew that Ali had conquered the castle. The door of the castle was so huge, even now if you go you can see the door the gate is very huge. It's not a normal gate. It's a castle's gate. Some of you have been to Europe, you've seen castles. The castle gate is so huge and the wooden door is so huge too. It is carried by 40 men. 40 men can carry this gate. With one arm, Ali dislodged this gate and he threw it away. And then he went inside the castle. And then read the story, the rest of the story yourself. You will see what happened inside the castle. Marhab, the military commander of the Jews of that, of that time, Ali cuts him into two pieces, two pieces with his sword. His daughter, the daughter of Marha, a Jewish lady, when she, they came to her, they said to her, they said to her, do you know your father is dead now? She said to them, tell me who killed him? Who murdered my father? They said, Ali ibn Abi Talib. She says, if Ali kills my father, I am okay with it. Ali is a hero. If someone else killed my father, I would go on and take revenge. But if Ali, Ali is an honorable man. Ali ibn Abi Talib, I know he's an honorable man. I am okay with that. Then this is here, here what I want to say. Listen to this. When Ali came back to the Prophet, victorious, and the Prophet says, This is Yawm al-Khandaq. I'm talking about Khaybar. I don't want to mix up. Sometimes I get too excited. <laughs> this is Khaybar was, uh, was after Khandaq was before and Khaybar was after. Khaybar was on the seventh year of Hijrah. Ali came and said, Ya Rasulullah. Rasulullah said, Ya Ali, I know, I raised you. You are my baby. 
I raised you. Six years old, you came to my house. I raised you. I trained you. But today you did something amazing. How could you dislodge the gate, huge gate, with your arms and you throw it away only by yourself? Ali said, Ya Rasulullah, I have not eaten food for three days. For three days. Not a single bite. This is the power of faith. This is not just physical power. Not just physical power. So if your heart is strong, you can create a miracle. But if the heart is timid and coward and weak and contaminated with the dunya, with the sickness of the dunya, then even if you, if you eat the healthiest food, you cannot achieve anything. You can't achieve anything. Therefore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you are asking for strength, Ya Rasulullah, and your community, dhikrullah. This is the fuel, fuel for the heart. Wathkur rabbaka fi nafsika. Two types of dhikr. Allah says, fi nafsika in your own soul, means secretly and privately. Fi nafsik. This is ulama, they call it al dhikrun nafsi. This is the internal remembrance in your heart. Maybe your tongue is silent, your lips are silent, your mouth is silent, but this is dhikrul nafsi, internal. You are connected with Allah. Your heart speaks with Allah. You don't have to use your mouth. Allah understands all languages. Allah knows about what goes in your heart. This is a dhikrul nafsi. Allah says to the Prophet, do two types of remembrance. One, fi nafsika, in your own self. A dhikrun nafsi, privately. Don't display it. Don't allow people to know about it. The second type, wa dun al jahr. Dun al jahri min al qawl. Do not do loud dhikr. When you do dhikr, do it dun al jahr. Without loudness, with moderate tone. This is the second type of dhikr. Allah says, don't do dhikr loudly. Don't do that. It is counterproductive. If you want to do dhikr, don't raise your voice. It's not good. This is a conversation with Allah. One day the Prophet, with one of the contingencies, were traveling and they went into a valley. One of the people, in the, it was in the evening, it was very dark, total darkness. Some of the companions, they started screaming, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. You know, Daesh style, you know. Daesh and Al-Qaeda, Allahu Akbar, Allah. The Prophet said, why do you scream? You are calling upon someone who has good hearing. He can hear you, you don't have to scream. You don't have to scream. إِنَّكُمْ لَا تَدْعُونَ غَائِبًا بَعِيدًا You are not calling upon someone who is absent or who is too far. وَنَحْنُ أَقْرَبُ إِلَيْهِ مِنْ حَبْلِ الْوَرِيدِ We are closer to man than his jugular vein. You don't have to scream. So two types of dhikr. One internal, without, not verbal. Nafsi, a dhikr nafsi The second type, وَدُونَ الْجَهْر الذكر القولي الذكر القولي النفسي inside القولي but this قولي has to be moderate not loud has to be moderate and then Allah says تضرعا وخيفة my ذكر and your ذكر our friends has to have two characteristics تضرعا تضرعا means with humility and submission with a humility and submission if you pray with a humility and sub submission it means you have a desire to pray you have a need to pray this is genuine prayers you have to call upon God with desire with understanding you need to call upon him this is one تضرعاً. تضرعاً. In, in the same chapter Surah Al-A'raf Ayah 55, 
Allah says, Ud'u rabbakum tadarru'an wa khufyah. Call upon your Lord with a humility, submission, wa khufyah in a private. The best ways to call upon Allah is in a private. We have two types of prayers. One in public. Dua, dua kumail, you just did dua kumail in public. Dua un-nudba in public. Dua al-sabah, dua al-samat, this dua, that dua, these are public, which is very good. But sometimes to be more sincere and more private with God, you have to do it secretly. That's even a better dua. To call upon Allah in private, wa khufyah, not in public. Whenever you are by yourself, not with anyone else. Take some moment of privacy. Be alone, but you are not alone. Sometimes I say, I am alone in the room. You are not alone. You have someone in the room. Before you go into that room, there is someone in that room, which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Go on the beach by yourself, but you are not by yourself. Go to the mountain while you are driving. You are not alone. There is someone who can listen and hear and pay attention and respond. وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ I'm so close. I'm not far. Khufya. And the best timing for khufya in a private is the last third of the night. If the night is eight hours, let's say from sunset until dawn, let's say ten hours, eight hours, then the last third of the night, divide the night into three, three sections, the last third is the prime time. That's where Allah pays attention more because He knows you deprived yourself from the sleep and you are tired. But you stood here for Him. Sometimes I'm walking, I'm eating, I'm driving. But this time is the time where I have to rest, I have to sleep. You have to rest and sleep. Allah knows He calls this time Prime time. This is the prime time. This is where Allah says, a drop, single drop of tears, genuine tears. تُطْفِئُ بِحَارًا مِنْ غَضَبِ اللَّهِ Extinguishes oceans of God's wrath and anger and dissatisfaction. You can extinguish that with a single tear, privately. Privately. You wash away all the sins. Because Allah says, you are genuine here. When you tell him sorry, you mean it. You mean it. There is remorse inside you. You're making a point to go back to him. He will embrace you. So, tadarru'an, number one. وَاذْكُرْ رَبَّكَ فِي نَفْسِكَ تَضَرُّعًا With humility and submission. And then, وَخِيفَة Another characteristics of your Dua and your remembrance should be khifa. And khifa here, the best word in English for khifa is in reverence. In reverence. I don't like to use in fear, in reverence. Hayba, in Arabic they say hayba. See, hayba, we use it with a father and his children. The father, the children do not, do not fear him. They should not fear him. They should revere him. There is a difference between fear and reverence. Fear, you fear the cops here in the streets. By the way, the only country people fear cops are America and a little bit in England. That's it. Those poor cops, they have no respect in the Muslim countries, believe me. No life, no respect. Nobody pays attention to them. Nobody even appreciates what they do. People assault them. I was told that in Iran, during the time of the Shah, people used to fear them. I don't know, I did not live at that time. So, fear is not good. Reverence is good. The father has to have reverence. They love him, but also they revere him. They respect him. They take him serious. When he says, I want this to happen, 
They take him serious. This is reverence. This is how we should love God, with reverence. Fear mixed with love, reverence. This is reverence. وَادْعُوا وَاذْكُرْ رَبَّكَ فِي نَفْسِكَ تَضَرُّعًا وَخِيفَةً خِيفَةً in reverence. So here, ulama, they say, when you call upon Allah, tadarru'an is a reference to longing for God, longing for Him, craving for Him, desiring Him, while khifa is a reference for reverence, reverence and veneration. Both have to be mixed when you call upon God. You have to have these two elements. One, longing for him. You miss him. The second, reverence also. They say, Asma'ullah, some of them are here. Mr. Mushtahidi, may Allah bless him. He engraved some of them here. Asma'ullah, the 90 na names of God. They are divided into two groups. One, Al Asma'ul Jamaliya. Second, Al Asma'ul Jalaliya. Jamal and Jalal. Jamal is a beauty. Asma'ul Jalaliya, the names that are beautiful. What are the names that are beautiful? Al Rahma, mercy. Al Rahim, Al Rahman, Al Rahim. Al Ghafoor, oft forgiving. Al Wadud, oft loving. Al Rahim, these. These names, al Jamaliya. On the other hand, we have another names that are not Jamal. Has nothing to do with the beauty. It has to do with Jalal. Jalal is what? Huh? Jalal is like Jabbar. He's Almighty. You have to say. In the name of the Almighty, he's Jabbar. Some of them are Muntaqim. Muntaqim. What is Muntaqim? Avenger. Allah is avenger. Allah says in the Quran, Inna rabbaka labil mirsaat. Those who abuse, those who wrong people, I go after them. I go after them. Allah is avenger. Don't think that things happen in this universe, it goes unnoticed. Allah's radar is the most powerful. We read an ayah now. Surah Al-Zilzila. فَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ خَيْرًا يَرَهُ وَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ شَرًّا يَرَهُ Anything we do, good or bad, we see the results. Cannot escape Allah's radar or, or Allah's justice system. Today, some countries, they take a pride in their policing agency, in their intelligence agency. They say if something happens here, we will capture the criminal after maximum of 24 hours. Allah is weaker than this state, than this government. He's weaker. He cannot capture him. Allah can capture him. But Allah sometimes says, I give him some respite, some time. Let him do more crimes. So when I punish him, no one says, why? Why did you punish him? He deserves the punishment. Besides, Allah wants to give us another chance, even to the criminals, another chance. Maybe he can go back to Allah. Maybe he feels sorry for what he did. So Allah does not want to make, take revenge immediately. Allah has a bigger capacity. His heart is much bigger. His tolerance, his patience, his endurance. Allah has halim. This is one of the as-sifatul jamaliya or jalaliya. Jamaliya, halim, forbearance. Halim, not the Iranian halim. Huh? So, we use two names of Allah. Tadarru'an, it's a reference to the names of Sifatul Jamaliya. We call upon him with love, longing to him. We tell him we miss you. This is why we say, oh, the merciful, oh, the compassionate, oh, the loving, oh, the forgiving. And then, again, we have to remember at the same time that Allah is watching. Allah is rewarding. If something happens, Allah is there. If the community could not help you, if the justice system could not help you, if the judge fails you, Allah does not fail you. Go back to him and you will see. 
Allah says, I will be in charge. I will be the lawyer of someone who's defenseless. I'll be a lawyer. I remember a story of that tyrant in Baghdad, Mu'tasim al-Abbasi, the Abbasite Caliph in Baghdad, who wreaked havoc in the land, torturing, killing, stealing, corruption, plundering. And people were tired, tired, so tired. One day he went for hunting outside the city with his entourage. While he was there enjoying the hunting, an old lady stopped in the middle of the road. She said, I want to talk to you. He's a tyrant. He's a crazy. Nobody can even speak to him. Even his advisors, they feared him, let alone an ordinary citizen. He said to her, okay, what do you want? Sarcastically, he said to her, young lady, what do you want to tell me? Quick. She said, get your soldiers out of the city. He said, I get my soldier out of the city. And if I don't do my young lady, what would you do to me? Listen to the answer. The answer of someone who has faith. This is an answer of someone who has no money, no weapon, no soldiers, no armies, but he has faith in Allah. That's the best strength. She said to him, لَنَرْمِيَنَّكَ بِسِحَامِ اللَّيْلِ أَلَّتِي لَا تُخْطِئُ مَنْ أصابت. We're going to target you with these special arrows, special arrows that are used in the middle of the night that does not go wrong. It hits the target. What is the arrows here? Huh? Dua. The hadith says, dua silahul mu'min. The weapon of the mu'min is not the rifle, not the gun, is the dua. We have this special dua. The caliph who was so tyrant when he heard this, he started shaving, shivering. He could not stand. He said to his commander, we have to leave the city immediately. We have to leave. An old lady, an old lady was able to crush him down. And then he decided to leave Baghdad and he went to Samarra. Samarra, it was created after this incident. He had to take his army from Baghdad and then he moved the capital of the Abbasite for 50 years, five decades from Baghdad into Samarra. Dua is powerful, but my friends, the dua does not reach the ceiling if, it, if the heart is not clean, not genuine. Sometimes we ask Allah to help us against someone while we at the same time we are wronging another person. Allah says, I can't help you. You are wronging someone else. And you come to me, once you stop your wronging, your injustice, your aggression, then come to me. The heart is clean. You, are not, you don't have sins. I can listen to you. وَاذْكُرْ رَبَّكَ فِي نَفْسِكَ تَضَرُّعًا وَخِيفَةً وَدُونَ الْجَهْرِ مِنَ الْقَوْلِ بِالْغُدُوِّ وَالْآصَالِ Allah says to him, Ya Rasulallah, the minimum requirement, listen to this, the minimum requirement for the dhikr is twice, in the morning and the evening. This is the minimum. Do not be of those who are unheedful or heedless. Ghafil. Ghafla comes when we don't remember Allah. Once we cut off, this communication line with Allah, we become ghafil, forgetful, ghafil, heedless. Then, of course, Allah says in another verse, this is the minimum requirement is that you mention him, do dhikr in the morning and the evening. In another verse in Surah Al-Anbiya, Allah says, يُسَبِّحُونَ اللَّيْلَ وَالنَّهَارَ لَا يَفْتَرُونَ Do not intermit. There are awliya Allah, who do sanctify tasbih day and night, non-stop, non-stop, la yaftarun. They don't get tired. This is their fuel. Amir al muminin says, Ilahi, bi dhikrika asha qalbi. Bi dhikrika asha qalbi. The reason I am alive today, I can walk, I survive, it is your remembrance. 
With your remembrance, I have energy. With your remembrance. If there is no remembrance, I have no energy. I can't live. Then we go to the last verse of Surah Al-A'raf where we conclude in about five minutes. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ عِنْدَ رَبِّكَ Verily, those who are near your Lord. What is nearness here, my friends? Nearness to someone is that we sit next to him or her. Nearness, in distance. This is Al-Qurbul Makani. We have Qurbul Makani, the nearness in distance. You, you, you sit next to one, so you bridge this gap, you become near to him or her. How do we get close to Allah? There is a seat next to him, Allah has a seat, and then we sit next to him? No. Al-Qurbul Maqami, not Al-Makani. Al-Maqami, the position, your spiritual position, with Allah is close. Allah has equal distance with all objects, equal distance. But how do we get close to Him? Qurb min Allah. How do we achieve that qurb, nearness to Allah? How do we achieve it? With dhikr. The more dhikr you do, the closer you get to Him. The closer you get to Him. Until someone like Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he reaches a spiritual stage not physical spiritual nearness that no one has reached asa an yab'athaka rabbuka maqaman mahmuda he occupies the highest level with god the highest level Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa And he did this because he never missed his tahajjud, salatul layl. Never ever. He would stand for hours. We stand five minutes, we get tired. And the Prophet stands for hours. And Allah says to him, Taha ma anzalna alayka al Quran li tashqa. I did not send this book upon you, so you suffer. But the Prophet said, I enjoy it. I don't feel tired. I give this example many times when I speak. That when you send your kids to Disneyland from 7 a.m. until 7 p.m., 10 p.m., even at, at 10 p.m., you ask them, are you tired? Do you want to go home? They say, no, we're not tired. But you bring them to lecture, after five minutes, they get tired. Five minutes. Especially my lectures. <laughs> the Prophet says, I'm not tired. I'm enjoying. We get tired because we don't know Allah. Why do we, we, we don't know Allah? Because we are near to the dunya. The more we get close to the dunya, attached to the dunya, attached to these you know, things that we have, we play with them. Some of it called money, some of it family, some of it property, you know. We get attached to them. Definitely when we get attached to them, we cut ourselves away from Allah. We become away. We become blinded by the dunya. And the heart which is blinded by the dunya or filled with the dunya leaves no room for Allah. Leaves no room for Allah. While the Prophet was not enchanted by the dunya. He was not. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ عِنْدَ رَبِّكَ لَا يَسْتَكْبِرُونَ Those, they have three qualities. أَوْلِيَاءُ Allah. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ Those who are with your Lord, not only the angels. Imam al-Baqir says, الْأَنْبِيَاءُ وَالرُّسُلُ وَالْأَئِمَّةِ Including the prophets, the apostles, and the infallible imams. Those are with your Lord. They have three characters. لا يستكبرون عن عبادته. Number one, they don't disdain. They do not disdain from worshiping their Lord. I heard the true story in some of the Arab countries when the monarch comes to visit the Prophet, he does not bow. Their leaders, they don't bow. There is no single picture of them bowing or prostrating. They sit on the chair, they put a chair, and they do salat on the chair. 
Why? To avoid bowing or prostration. Because he's the monarch, he's the king. He's not equal with me and you. He can't put his forehead on the, on the floor. He's the king, he's the sultan. Allah says the good ones, they don't disdain from putting their forehead on the floor. And the more they become great, the more they love, they yearn to put their forehead on the, on the ground. They don't want to raise their head. The hadith says, لو يعلم, Only if the musalli, the one who performs the prayers, only if he knows ما يخشاه من الرحمة لما ود أن يرفع رأسه من السجود. Only if we know how much mercy Allah is going to bestow on us when we do sujood, we would have wanted to raise our head from sujood. But we don't know. The problem is that we don't know. We veiled ourselves. We veiled ourselves. These sins, this is why some people, they have a, when they pray, it's a burden on them. Salat is a big burden on them. Either they don't want to pray, or if they s stand for the prayers, it is the most boring thing for them. لا يستكبرون عن عبادته the second, وَيُسَبِّحُونَهُ Tasbih is tanzih, my friends. What is tanzih? The meaning of tasbih is what? Subhanallah. When you say Subhanallah, and imagine in the ruku' what do we say? Subhan Rabbi al Azim wa bihamd. In the sujood, what do you say? Subhan. So it's only sanctification. The best type of dhikr is sanctification. What does it mean? It means that you don't bring Allah to human's level. You don't pull him down to earth. What does that mean? It means you don't believe God has associates or partners or a wife or a son. He doesn't have these things. You don't bring him down. It means also you don't lose hope in him. You may lose hope in people, even if they are generous. Do not entirely depend on them. One day you go to them, they say, sorry. Sorry, I can't help today. I have a problem today. Put your help in Allah. Allah always helps. No single day he would say sorry to you. Always, whenever you need him, he's there for you. And then the last one, وَلَهُ يسجدون. And they prostrate and bow down only to Allah. Meanings, meanings, they submit only to Allah. If we can submit only to Allah and put our trust in Him, that's faith. Imam al Rada says, this is faith. You want to ask me about faith? Put your trust in Allah. Look up to Him. Even if you are the wealthiest, the happiest, the healthiest, do not depend on what you have. Don't depend on what you have in your hand. Depend on what Allah has saved for you. This is tawakkul. This is the meaning of tawakkul. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our a'mal, inshallah, our deeds, and to enable us to understand the Quran, inshallah. Our dear brother and a friend, Dr. Muhammadi, who is a dentist, a very good man. He had an accident. So let's remember him in reciting Amman Yujib al Muhtar. And also for all the Mu'mineen, Mu'minat, all those who have needs, asking Allah this night, Laylatul Jumu'ah, a sacred night, to inshallah solve all the problems of all the Mu'mineen, Islam and Muslimin. Someone was telling me, Sayyid, on Sunday there is Super Bowl, so please pray. I don't know to whom I pray, I don't know the teams, believe me. I've been in America for 21 years and I don't even know the names of the, these teams, let alone, you know. I am the most ignorant when it comes to American football and, and uh, baseball. I, and they explained that to me many times, but again I go back to zero. So I know many of you, inshallah, you are going to be glued to your televisions on Sunday. I know that, you know.
May Allah bless you, inshallah, and give you the tawfiq. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Amman yujibu al-mustar idha da'ah wa yakshifu al-su'u. Amman yujibu al-mustar idha da'ah wa yakshifu al-su'u. Amman yujibu al-mustar idha da'ah wa yakshifu al-su'u. Amman yujibu al-mustar. إذا دعاه ويكشف السوء أمن يجيب المضطر إذا دعاه ويكشف السوء يا الله من على مرضانا بالشفاء والعافية المريض المنظور اللهم ألبس ثوب الصحة والعافية عاجلا اللهم اقض حوائج المحتاجين فرج عن المكروبين من على مرضانا بالشفاء والعافية tomorrow we have صلاة الجمعة at twelve and in my first sermon, I'm going to speak about why at our Islamic centers, we don't see any converts, any American converts, why they are missing. Not only this, we have over 2000 Islamic centers in America. And I'm going to speak about three reasons. People ask what's wrong? The wrong are in three points. Number one, in the Muslims, in us. Number two, in the American people, some of them. Many of them are good, but some of them, Islam does not work for them. They are for the dunya, and Islam is for the dunya and the akhirah. And th point number three, there is also a problem with the version of Islam that we practice here. The Islam we practice in America is Oriental Islam. Does not work for the Occidental. Oriental. A Saudi version of Islam, Iraqi version, Iranian version, Pakistani version of Islam does not work in this country, does not attract, does not have the ability to attract others to Islam. I'm going to discuss this tomorrow, Salatul Jumu'ah, inshallah. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ajjil fi faraj Sayyidina wa maulana sahib al-asri wa zaman and baray ruhi حاجی خاتون نوری مادر برادر عزیزمون جناب آقای برزگر دکتر برزگر الفاتحه مع الصلاه علی محمد و آل محمد